good evening to each and every one of you joining us here for this week's show, Manchester. I don't know how you've got the energy to say it like that because I must admit, it is hot in the studio and it's not just because we're two fabulous ladies, no. it's just boiling. Can I just draw our attention now? I've just seen it on screen, so I love the colour coordination again. Of course. Hey, but I don't know why we keep doing it, you know, but we're like, we're like matching all the time, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, it's because we just don't uh, associate with each other throughout the whole of the week. <laughs> I don't know her. She does not know me. Yeah, never met you before. Nobody knows that we actually dislike each other, do they? But we'll work on that for another day. We really, really will. Yeah, but if you are boiling at the moment at home, I know a lot of us are in the studio and outside of the studios. We are going to cool you down with some ice cold entertainment. Oh, ice cold entertainment. Yes, I'm sweating like a pig. I really am. I'm, it's no good this weather for me for a fat bird. I tell you now, it's not good at all. I am dripping through my ginger hair from everywhere. <laughs> now, we've got a wonderful show lined up for you today, everybody. We really have. Have we? Oh, we have. We've got a plethora of guests as usual. So thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for the full hour because coming up, we have got the running mank. Ah, Danny. Ah, Danny, everybody. A man that's running 5K every day in this weather I know. for charity, everybody. He's doing absolute wonders. Absolutely. We've also got some beauty tips from the lovely Emma Corrodus, who is joining us in the studio and help showing us some ways that we can cool down as well using some products. <laughs> We have. It's all going on. We're also talking to a beautiful brand of, of clothing called Frank and Fox. I've, I've, you know, I've been practicing that all week because I just knew that it was going to go wrong. Frank and Fox. There we go. Clothing. And they're going to be talking to us about their environmentally friendly clothing. It's an absolutely gorgeous company. And uh, we've also got... A new we, member of the family. We have indeed. Let's say hello to our lovely Victoria. Hello, Victoria. Hello. How are you? All the way over there. All the way over the other side. Oh, my goodness. Now, tell us why. What are you joining us for, then? So I'm here to um, bring everyone's opinions from socials into the show. So if you've got an opinion on something that we're talking about, you know, drop us a, a tweet or um, DM on Instagram. They're both at your MCR. Or come on, comment on the Facebook Live, and I'm here to make sure that your opinion gets onto the show. Oh, that exactly is right. fantastic. We like a show of opinions, don't we? Yeah, and the thing is, we're getting loads and loads of people connecting with us okay. on our social channels, and it's great to get you involved because that's what your Manchester is all about. It's yes. your Manchester. And uh, I know we've got some questions going on uh, about in social. What are we asking, Victoria, at the moment? So uh, this week we asked you all what your opinion is on the help out to eat out scheme. Good, bad, indifferent? Are you even taking part? Oh, there you go. So I think we'll get some interesting answers have there. You, have you sampled the eat out? Do you know what? Funnily enough, I tried to get on the eat out scheme last mm -hmm. night, but yeah. obviously a lot of people are doing it. I, I couldn't, I couldn't scooby doo. I couldn't get anywhere. Couldn't get anywhere. Anywhere. I tried the city centre, uh, I tried uh, Oldham, I tried Berry, all kind of local areas, and I couldn't. And I say I couldn't, it was kind of like nine o'clock and afterwards, but you know, I'm not rock and roll. It's all right. Like, you know, there's always one place where you can go and you guarantee the beautiful, um, look at that drip honestly there's always one place you can go where you guarantee a fantastic night out and that is a wonderful place called new york new york so good they named it twice and we are joined now with our first guest the one and only tracy walsh and legend of the cabaret scene and a few other sites that we can't really talk about the one and only easy on nicole everybody hello how are you two hi can look at them the glamour of it all and everything can you hear us clearly uh, just about, yeah, it's a bit quiet. Would it be easier if we went inside? Because we, we feel that we can't hear you properly. Uh, I, I, I've, I've got a feeling that I know exactly what to do. If you just cut to Michelle for a second, we can do that. Oh, Let's have a full one of Michelle. <laughs> Well, Melissa is going to sort out some issues with the sound there, but what we've got Tracy on for really to talk about is kind of the situation that we're, we're all in at the moment because we are going out and about, we're eating out, we're able to go out into bars and restaurants. And of course, New York, New York is one of those key places. But Tracy, you're finding that people aren't being as respectful as they should be. Isn't that right? 
Sorry, sorry. sorry. We've just run inside. I just need to, if you just give me that question again. Sorry, that's you said. No, absolutely. What I was saying, um, Tracy, there is that with New York, New York being opened, you're having issues with people kind of maybe ignoring some of the rules and regulations that are needed, like the social distancing. Um, listen, I've got to say, for, for, for everybody, it's challenging, not just for businesses, it's challenging. For people who are used to coming out to the party palace and to all the rest of the party places in the village, the village is up there as party central in not just this country in europe and to come out and feel like you you know which i feel operating that we it's not a hall of correction but sometimes i feel like that it's been challenging and the, the, the bad thing is and the sad thing is is that the village as a whole in general and i don't know i've not heard of anyone who hasn't adhered to it they're adhering massively to the rules. They're really conforming more than anywhere in Greater Manchester. And because we are known for being party places and we're, it's expected that we are not going to respect the social distancing, we're not going to respect all the rules. They're not our rules, although we do agree with them. We agree we need to eradicate this dreadful thing that's going on um we we're up there we're paramount we are the ones who are doing it and all i'm hearing all over manchester is greater manchester a sudden manchester it's like they walk on water it's like they can do whatever they want um alderley edge wilmslow didsbury cheadle you go through all those areas my husband drove past the town hall tonight and something that we were criticised for in the village, and I'm not having a whinge. All I'm saying is, please, please understand we're under this spotlight for whatever reason. People are saying to us, well, you know, we don't have to do that in this bar or that bar that isn't in the village. It's always and ever in the village. I don't have to do that in Didsbury. Why am I having to do it here? And that's the challenge. The challenge is not not the fact that the, the, the social distancing we all, all the bars in the village agree with. We all, all my contemporaries are adhering. It's a fact that these suburban bars are not enforcing it. And what's going to happen is there will definitely be a second wave. I can say, hand on heart, and I'm not, this is not plugging the village. We come to the village, you're going to be safer than in any other bar because we know because we've got licensing and every authority crawling all over us because they're expecting and they get our little gay community that we are going to abuse all the rules we're not going to adhere to them well take it from me our gorgeous gay community is doing i'm just going to hand you over to easier and please don't take that as a whinge or a negative it's just frustrating and it's challenging for me because easier she's one of my closest friends what she's done she just said listen you've been there for me let me come and police it for you at the weekend i'll be your maitre day i'll police it while while you look after easier, it. easier how are you policing it then uh, how are you going around conquering all these attitudes that perhaps you don't need conquering I can't hear you, Belinda, sorry. How are you going about um, policing this then outside of New York? I'm doing my very, very best. I mean, I'm used to being on stage, Belinda, as you know, with Roxy, yeah. Felicia and the rest of the queens that work here. Um, you know, it's been nice for me because, you know, the customers don't really know me as a person. They only know me from stage. So I'm getting to know the customers a lot better and they get to know me because I am trans. I'm not just a performer. I am trans and I'm really enjoying it. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the people do as they're told, but you know, there's always going to be one that does it. So we are trying our very, very best. But like Tracy said, you know, with the licensing down here every weekend, the police around, you know, we're just trying our best. So what's your job then, monitoring it? What, how, how are you doing that then? How are you carrying that out? 
So I'm going around to tables when I sign people in, when they arrive, and they're told the rules, they have to sit down, they can't walk around the premises unless they go to the toilet or for cigarettes. Um, it's like they could smoke at the tables a few weeks ago outside, and now they've changed that for us. They can't go there, so we have to now police the smoking area as well. I just think they're making it a little bit difficult for us here in the village and not the rest. We have got Pride coming up and I know that, you know, both you and Belinda have been talking about Pride and, and there's something that you kind of wanted to say about that. Um, right. What we've got to say, so Pride as, as an event, we all know as every other Pride throughout the country, it's not going to be happening in any sort of format. Um, Earlier on in the year, we had, well, uh, six weeks ago, as businesses, we'd come together and said, look, if we can, out of the village business subs that we pay in our organisation, we'll try and rent a couple of areas to, you know, hire the space, not to make it profit making, just to make extra social distancing spaces where people would go and chill out because we were worried about an influx of people. But we, you know, the authorities, and probably rightly so, were, were worried that the larger, if we make any sort of event or any sort of space, it's going to encourage people and they won't respect social distancing, which has to be the most important thing. So we, as a village, we have sat and had many discussions. It's August bank holiday weekend. Historically, we we've done it we put we i i say again we're probably in europe and probably in the world we're in the top three uh pride weekends that is not going to happen we haven't got any additional space the problem is we're at 40 percent capacity keeping in place the social distancing that's required of us and then the new rules that came into place last week where even inside it's just one family one household sorry per table um outside the same we all know the rules two households per table up to eight listen belinda i've got these i i, I go to bed and i dream these numbers and what the rules and regulations are Operating August weekend, is, that's going to be a challenge. And as businesses, I'm definitely, we all agree, we all, for months and months and months, it's beautiful, we've sang from the same song page. We've Tracy, is it fair to say you're, you're worried? Is it fair to say you're worried, Tracy? Pardon? I'm not, you know what? You know, my, my concerns are um, that what I want to say to everybody is there are 52 weekends of the year but over August weekend, it's the same as any other weekend because we haven't got pride. We've not got um, all the outside entertainment. We've got none of that. It's going to be the same as the last five weekends have been. So what we're trying to encourage people is to say, look, why don't you, the weekend after, and I've said it to people, said, can I book for this week? No, nobody's taking any bookings. What we're saying is, why don't you come next weekend? And now groups of my friends are saying, actually, August weekend, because it's not Pride weekend, we're not going to come down to the village. We'll come down the weekend before, the weekend after, because we know you're going to have to sort of look after that. And what I say as a shout out to that we've come up with a slogan of it's our local area for local, regular people, and then that doesn't mean to say well we love everybody all year round if it's one weekend if it's one night the the village is welcoming to all well we know However, the village that's really welcoming and the, you know that's great and what you're saying there tracy we totally like take on board and i know we've had some comments coming in that have been really supportive that we're going to get to later tracy we're going to have to leave it right there though because we've got our next guest waiting so thank you so much tracy uh, and we will get those comments you know, a little bit later village will survive and a bar like new york new york will always always in my opinion and survive passionate lady and She's you know and, it, and it's great that she has so much heart
that? Or it's one thing being a bar owner. Yeah, it's yeah. been it's another thing being somebody that works so hard uh, for the people. Absolutely. Now, I'll tell you someone who's up. working really hard at the moment. Yes. In this heat, yes. getting their running shoes on, it's our Danny the Running Mank. Welcome to your Manchester, Danny. Hi, guys. You okay? Yeah, I can't believe we've stopped you running. I know, but just before... So oh, bless you. Look at you. Look like you. You look. You look relatively calm, considering. <laughs> well, I'm, I feel fine. I'm just at work at the moment, so I've, I've just taken a little bit of time out just to speak to you guys. What is it you do, Danny? Um, so I'm a duty manager in, in a hotel in Leeds. Oh, a hotel. You know, we, we've missed something here. You know, we should have fully commented on everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lady that works with us closely, and she's done us a wonderful VT all week. Can we have a look at it? Do you mind? Oh, Dan, it will be back with you. This will inspire you to do your wonderful. Don't uh, go anywhere. Stay there. Danny. Let's have a look at this feed. This is Charlie. Uh, Lady Sybil. And Hello again, my loves. It's Charlie Houston Sykes back with Booze and Bites. And this week, the ladies have let me out. What were they thinking? So we're going to have a nice bite to eat, some drinks, and I hope you'll join us. Porn, isn't that Danny? Lovely, that isn't it? It's Bill. Bill. <laughs> We're hot in here already. I tell you what, we are now, Danny. But oh, no, I've got a bit colder. I'll talking honest, about the weather, what was your run like today? Because you're doing 5k every day for a year, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, today was really hot, uh, muggy. You know, every every single day is is different, um, and that's that's what excites me. You know, I've been running um from the start of april to, to now um and you know every day is different your mindset's different the weather's different um but the consistency of just running every day for these charities is is, is you know is, is great danny what made you get into why did you want to start running every i mean as somebody who does very little running why on earth would you want to run every single day um I just wanted to i've always wanted to run marathons now with my job but that's never going to be possible like i've got I've run 5Ks, I've run 10, 10Ks, but um, I thought I wanted to, in February, you know, everything was a bit dark on social media. There was there was a lot of uh, negative negativity everywhere. Um, I just wanted to do something that I, every day just to boost my, myself, morale, and, and, and do good for other people. So that, that's what, you know, triggered my, my thoughts. You've got, a great, you've got a great slogan. Let's bring that slide up. Uh, the Running Man Mission, as I'm calling it. There you are. Lovely. Look at that. Hey, yeah. give me. Well, is it no true? Do you know I nearly read that wrong, then? I nearly said you. No. So, anyway, that is a great thought. And then there's the mission uh, as well, uh, which is there that we'll bring up as well. There we go. The Running Man Mission. There we go. Danny, Lovely. you mentioned you're doing it for charity. Tell us yeah. about the two charities, then, that, that you're doing it for and why, that, why they mean so much to you. Of course. So I'm doing it for two charities, both based in Manchester. So there's uh, firstly Team Hill Charitable Trust, and um, they're a local based charity in, in Oldham. Uh, they're fronted by Steve Hill, who's a, a deputy head teacher in, in Oldham. And he he basically started doing challenges like myself um, many years ago to, to raise money for local initiatives. Um, very recently, uh, last year, he started his own charity to to do these things on a, on a bigger scale, getting people involved um, and raising money for 
for people in our area and um, abroad. You know, it, he's he's recently funded a, a roof in Uganda for a school. So that's you know, it's amazing. This money is going directly to the charity, and you know, they're using it for for local causes. Um, and the second charity is Destination Florida. Um, they're based in Manchester, and they every year take 70 uh, young children away to Disneyland, Orlando, um, for, for a trip of a lifetime. You know, these children have got medical needs, um, and it's not always possible for these to get out and, and experience this. So the money raised in my challenge will, will go to both charities um, and hopefully help a lot of people. I think it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing what you're doing because I know Belinda says she doesn't run. I yeah. I do run and I, I absolutely adore running. Yeah. But I think even as a runner, I would find it hard to commit every day to 5K because, you know, it might not sound that much on paper, but literally that is a, it is a massive commitment getting yourself out there. Yeah, no, it's massive. And how I saw it was like I could spend half an hour a day flicking through Facebook, Twitter, you know, seeing all these things. And I just thought, what can you do? You know, what what's another thing you can do productive wise? Um, same amount of time, get outside. And it's, you know, for your mental health and and whatnot, you, you can do lots of things with that time. You know, you can you can swap out, you know, your, your Netflix show for, you know, going for walks. You know, we've had a lot of time to ourselves recently. Um, and it's it's up to us to make use of that. So I think yeah it is a lot but if you if you put it into context it's not that much it's you know 30 minutes a day and when the 365 days are up do you intend to keep running is there, is there something special that you that you would like to do after the 365 days um i'd hopefully want to do more i mean i can't i wouldn't probably do a year-long thing again because obviously mentally um it is difficult like more than physical you know i could run every day um for you know the rest of my life but mentally it's probably not the best idea and um, so i think after this i'll try and i want to do something bigger but in a shorter space of time if if that's possible but yeah maybe marathons we're gonna put up how you can donate to your wonderful cause danny uh, i know that but you had a special donation didn't you a while back and uh, yeah. I, I read about it on your social channels because it was tony morris and yeah. he passed away himself didn't he last week uh, yeah. how, how special was that that he, he reached out to you um it came as a surprise really like when i started this challenge i never expected it to to spiral into what it has you know on instagram and, and facebook i've got I've got a little support um, community going on, and when I, when I first, you know, Tony followed me on, on Instagram, he, you know, liking everything, he's sending me um, messages of support, you know, and it was the run up to my hundredth run. Um, he never said anything to me directly, like that he donated, but you know, he put on the just give him, um, and he donated a little bit of money, and then the day after, you know, he sent me words of support for that hundredth day. Um, and that was massive, you know, thinking that my my challenge has reached, you know, somebody so, you know, I I admired him and, and you know, it's such a shame about the news. But, you know, I think he was, you know, he, he was up until a few weeks ago, he was doing a couch to 5K. And that just shows you, you know, you don't, you don't know what people are doing. You don't know what, what's going on in their mind, you know. So I think he's an inspiration to me and I just want to keep on going and, and you know, do people proud. You're an inspiration to a lot of people being able to do that. I mean, I, I, I've, I've been looking at what you do and I wish I could do it and I might even try and give it a small attempt. Do but it. Do it. I'll, I'll do it with you. That's what yeah. we'll do. You should make it harder. You should do it in heels. Yeah, that's not healthy. It's not something we recommend, viewers. Danny, thank you so much for thank your time. You very much. I'm running you're doing an amazing amazing job so follow it's the running mank isn't it on instagram yeah. at the running, running mank. Mank on instagram facebook and a little bit on twitter but i'm not very active on that That's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, get behind danny thank you and uh, hopefully we'll see you maybe on one of your last runs absolutely, absolutely. yeah hopefully Thank you so much, Danny. Uh, just before we carry on, I'm, I'm throwing our directors totally out today, but let's just have a look at some of the comments uh, about uh, our Tracy and her uh, easy the interviews from there. We had one from Terry Fox just a little bit there. That's it. Let's see what Terry said. As a gay bar owner in Oldham, I agree with everything Tracy is saying. There are not our rules, but we are upholding them and we feel like we are being made to look like monsters. What else was there? uh let's have a look yay oh there we go there we are 
the running man. Well done, Danny. That's to do with Danny. There were so lots of people commenting. We have got we'll people commenting, and we are going to have uh, Vicky coming back, and uh, she'll be telling us a little bit more about what you've been saying this evening and how you've been joining us, and some of your comments about the Eat Out scheme in Manchester. So don't forget to send us your messages in via the Facebook Live if you want to comment, or via Instagram or tweet us. And Vicky will have more in a little bit. Indeed. In the meantime. One lady has got some information for us. She's back. Ah, oh, Hayley, everybody. She's telling us all about a little program you might know as I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here! <laughs> Hi, I'm Hayley and welcome to this week's On The Box. How are we all doing? I want to talk to you about I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here! <laughs> Now, producers really, really wanted to film in Australia as usual, but due to COVID, they weren't able to. So, it's now going to come to our screens from a ruined castle in North Wales, and it's rumoured to be very, very haunted indeed. Ooh, uh. Now, rumoured to be taking part are Tamsin Althwaite, AJ Pritchard of Strictly Come Dancing, Vernon Kay, now he's rumoured to have signed a £250,000 deal, Eric Katona, the Vivian, who's winner of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, Beverly Callard of Corrie, Paul Merson, Jesse J, John Barnes, Carol Baskin from Tiger King, Matt Baker from The One Show, Susanna Reid, Piers Morgan and Ben Shepherd. Now, Piers said last year that he would consider it this year if he got paid £5 million. I wonder if he would actually drop his price now he knows he doesn't have to eat bugs. We'll see. Now, crew are reported to be staying at the following place. Now, it's the longest place name for a place in the UK and it's one of the longest in the world. Now, here goes. I'm really sorry to my Welsh friends if I get it wrong, but I'm feeling brave. Right, okay. That's just me warming up my gok. Okay, here goes. Clan via Puch Gwyn Ge Go Ger Yerk Win Drob Wuk Clan Twi Silio Go Go Goch yeah, I think that's right. Let me know. Drop me a tweet. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? At Hey Kate, let me know. Are you looking forward to the series as well? Let me know. I think it's going to be brilliant. I'm, I really can't wait to watch it. And obviously that hits our screens in November. So yeah, that's it for this week and I'll catch you next time. Bye. <music> What, she what? got the Welsh right. She got the Welsh right. But she got <laughs> Eric Katona. <laughs> Eric that? Katona. Is that, is that Kerry Katona's Kerry? brother? Yeah, or is it Eric, Eric Cantona? I mean... The Manchester United legend. <laughs> Cantona. Ooh, ah. Oh, Katona. Oh, we're always picking her around. Oh, no, I know. She's going to kill me. Just a little bit. Was just it, just quite, a little bit well of a known? footballer, you yeah. know. What, did he play for the good team or your team? Uh, <laughs> I am. You know what? I have to pull her up on that because yeah. being the huge red yeah. that we are in our family, sorry, yeah. Blues, you know, I just had to say, can't you know? It's all right. I think the Blues are more worried that I've got their side covered for them. <laughs> well, <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, if anybody picks up on that message, uh, I, I might just beat you to it. But let's go over to our social corner and see what Vicky's got for us. Hi, Vicky. Hello. So um, we've got Scott Maguire. He's watching from Glasgow. So quite a way away. Um, also, we have got, oh, Tom, he's been out in Canal Street. He said New York, New York is a great place, perfectly social distanced. Fantastic. And have we got any eat out comments? Has anybody been talking about um, where they've gone or, or, you know, have they been able to get a table? Yeah, so uh, we've got quite a few who've been eating out. Some have been out for brunch. So we've had people go to the Seed and Cherry. I've been there myself as well. And I know that's really good. Um, some people have been out to the Alchemist. It seems everywhere's booked up, though. There's been a few people that have commented saying, oh, it's difficult to get in some places. Yeah, I think that is the case, isn't it? I think it's a great scheme, but it's you've got to book early or time it right if you are going to try and, and walk in these places. But brilliant. Keep those comments coming. Keep Absolutely. Coming. Thank the, you, Vicky. Are you warm, love? I am warm. I'll tell you I what, am. I am sweating. I wonder what the weather's going to have for the rest of the week. Oh, hey. Shall we have a look? We'll Let's have, have a look. look. At the weather. <laughs> Good evening, Shell and Bell, and welcome everyone to my weather forecast for your eyes only, only on your Manchester, and I'm Paul Rudd. 
and it's not looking good this week guys it's looking like a mixed bag weather wise as we go over to thursday right now it's going to look sunny and cloudy with the temperatures of 20 degrees celsius friday is going to rain with the temperatures of 19 saturday sunny and rainy with the temperatures of 20 degrees celsius and also sunday is going to rain as well with the temperatures of 21 so we can't have it good all the time can we guys so stay safe have a great weekend and don't forget your brollies because it'll help with the hair and it's back to shell and bell in the studio look it's gonna be gorgeous and rainy and a bit of break all out you know i've never wanted so much one weather i want what? A bit of oxygen. Do you know what I mean? That's all I could do. Do you know with. what though? We are never happy, are we? When it rains, we want sunshine. When it's sunny, we're like, oh, we need to cool down a little bit. We really, really do. I tell you what though, Paul does brighten up our day. It was a, a great report from Paul there, and even with his brolly out. Uh, just before we move on to our next session, there's a VT that I just want to show you about what these guys were doing. Maybe I don't even tell anybody anything more. Outside the library yesterday uh, for We Are Events. It's absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, oh, this is the red lights, isn't it? There you go. Click on that. There we are. Here we are. Now we can speak over this. It doesn't mute us now. Oh. These are there doing something special. And they were marching, weren't they? Yeah, no, they were. And it was for a, a really fantastic reason because, as we know, live events have been cancelled. Kind of theatres can't open yet. People are losing their income. Uh, you know, you've got freelancers, people that have been furloughed. People can't just get back to the jobs that they want to do in the entertainment industry, in the live events industry. And this is still the way and so they they did this peaceful protest a silent protest like this and i think it was really powerful don't you it was it was nice to walk up to it there was there were the lights the big lights were streaming right up into the air yesterday and i couldn't figure out where they're from uh, went down to the library and uh, checked it all out and that was yeah, what it and was the red lights were just in in unity everywhere because it was kind of the red lights it's they they have stopped they've had to down tools but in terms of the people that are out of work you know there's there's stuff that you don't realize like like sound guys, you know, on tours and stuff, and kind of the lighting people, the tech is everything is look catering. It's just it's endless, and the amount of billions that they can put into, you know, our economy, um, it's it's crazy. And hopefully, the parts aren't working either. People who make the products aren't no. working, but we've got one here with us now anyway. Uh, she's she you might recognise her. She's normally popping in when she's talking about her lovely shop. Well, well not her shop but a shop that she... She can do style, but now she can do super duper beauty. Yes. Uh, we have got Emma Carodas with us Hi. here in the studio. Hello. How are Hello. you? All right. You Brilliant, brought, thank you. you Very hot in here. You brought some lovely products today. And uh, this is Tropic Skincare. Now, I'm not it too is. familiar with that brand. Tell us a bit about it. So I personally wasn't familiar with it either until earlier on this year, um, working where I work at the moment in a clothes shop. I always suffer with bad skin the air con you know it's not always great um and i got talking to one of my friends and said my skin's feeling all dry and i was still having a moan basically and she said let me introduce you to this skincare range she said i've been selling it it's great and i said no nothing will work you know i've had dry skin since i was 17 i'm now 35 nothing's gonna work and she said please will you take the products home and try them so i did and they worked so here i am now selling them myself because i've had such a great experience with them that i want to tell the world about them and well, introduce exactly. other people i mean to you them. learn from a friend and kind of you're telling us about it now it yeah. it is a brand that is the best kept secret but in the world of like <laughs> beauty it's won so many awards it you know like the beauty brand that of the I've year. Got with me today um which you can have a look at after is an award-winning cleanser it just basically melts away your makeup off your face oh. yeah well, it's I, fantastic I say <laughs> that i have tried that cleanser um because i am a bit of a fan of tropic and um i as we both do we wear our, our lovely lashes we have lots of <laughs> mascara on. i was going to ask you is it industrial strength well, it, it's, yeah, it belinda it would be amazing cool. Honestly, I'm you must try, try some. You know, make a little video. You must try some. Because before this, I used to use makeup wipes and I would rub, rub, rub away at my skin and it would feel really kind of dry afterwards and still not get the makeup off. And now I use bamboo cloth. A bamboo cloth? Bamboo cloth. Yeah, put a bit of cleanser, cleanser on, rub it, 
and it does magically come off i i have to say so it's it's a yeah. definite one for me that one what's your favorite product though so I, my personal favorite is super greens which is one of our oils so it's a nutrient boosting oil um you only need the tiniest amount you can see i don't know if you can see i've had that since may and it's literally not much gone out of it and i use that nearly every day now what do you do? Do you put that on before anything else then? Is so you do, here, yeah, we, we, we've got a super green here that we're right. going to try. Let's have a go. Yeah, you do your whole routine. So you cleanse your tone, you moisturise, and then super greens comes at the end of all that. Super greens to me is a healthy drink. What's, what's in yeah, it then? Yeah, it's what's got it broccoli in it, which my five-year-old absolutely loves that it's got broccoli in it. So it's got all... It's got cinnamon in it. It's not got cinnamon in it, no. What's that back of spell that's a bit Christmassy? It's, no, that's, that's, um, ah. Oh. It's like all the goodness. Oh, it is like a vegetable, your face. but I know that. Kale. No. There's kale in it, yes. Like there's, kale. Kale. There's, there's kale, yeah. It's, it's nice just, it's such it's... a good feeling when you put it on your skin, it feels amazing. Sorry, what did you say that kind of does for you? Is that nutrients, did you Nutrient say? Nutrient boosting, yeah. So it's, it's fantastic, and I love it. Um, but back to where Tropic came from, mm. I know I've gone completely off the ball Sorry. with the question. Um, you might recognise the name Susie Ma. She was on The Apprentice in 2011. I do, I'm a big Apprentice fan. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So she came third, she didn't win. Um, she went with the products, um, which you've got a sample on your table, actually, guys, of oh. the um, exfoliating body okay. scrub. So Susie made this back many years ago um, oh. when she lived in Queensland and she then moved over here with her mum and one day she decided she was going to get 50 jam jars, she was going to make this product and go and sell it on Greenwich Market to help her mum pay the bills and she sold out in a day. Wow. And then 2011 she went on The Apprentice, Lord Sugar backed her and now she's got, she's gone from her mum's kitchen to a beauty hq in surrey so they make all the products fresh in surrey what's, what's, I, I what's, find that really interesting sorry that what? they do make these fresh so once you put your order in yeah, it's so, kind of like done yeah, for you then, isn't that's it? why they're not sold in shops it's all done through ambassadors like myself spreading the word about these amazing products for you to then purchase I have, and i have to say this smells just like a spa I know. yeah it's, it's got it lemon myrtle much. in it that's what it'll be yeah it's wow and so this exfoliator, yeah. again, kind of, is it a, is it a daily one? Is it something no, you should be doing do once a week? No, I would do it every day. It's sort of, I would do it every couple of days, every three three days, you know, two or three times a week maybe. Um, you just put it on before you get in the bath. So put it all over, get in the bath, and you can actually use the oil. Once the exfoliating sands have come off, you can keep the oil on and you can actually use it as like a shaving oil so you can you know when you're in the bath you can shave your legs with the oil off that, this oh i'll do that with my fly mill <laughs> there we go all right you really don't need a lot of this no, because i've just put a all. tiny bit on my hand and literally you know it's it's covered it it's gorgeous what price points are we talking about though for, it for, varies for this what michelle to be honest to? so the body scrub is 24 so that's for the pot which is this size and again you only need a tiny little bit um, in terms of the cleansers, toners, it can vary. So you get your cleanser, which is 18, um, but we do do lots of different sets where basically the bigger the set you buy, the more money you save. So we do um, a skincare selection, which is £98, but when you work it all out, you get a mask free, one of the face masks. So we do facelift and clear skin and a deep hydration and you get an oil free as well so you get one oil that you pay for in the set and then you get one oil completely free in the set and they're normally 42 pound each yeah, and great. you think that sets 98 pounds yeah, so yeah, it does yeah, work yeah, out really yeah, yeah it's beneficial and now i did tease earlier on that you were going to tell us a few of these products that might help us cool down yes because i was just about to go on to that as you read my mind <laughs> so as it's very hot in the studio um the, bit. <laughs> the vitamin toner which you would use after your cleanser before your moisturizer is great for just spritzing in this heat um i've got a friend actually that texted me earlier on today and said she's been spraying herself with this every couple of hours today because it's just cooling it right down you can actually store it in the fridge if you want to as oh, well sorry, what is that, so it's a toner so it's a pore refining mist is it a spray yes it's a spray it here, so we can have a spray <laughs> here we are 
Oops. Look at that. Do that again. We're looking in the shop. Hold on. Here. There you go. You ready? Three, two, one. There we go. <laughs> There you go. And there's another spray, actually. I'll uh, take this. You'll never get it back. <laughs> <laughs> I know where she's coming from. Um, there is another spray, though, which I think tonight we could all do with. It's a shame you can't just deliver these all round. Why? What's this, then? Oh, it's the, the sleek one. The sleek mist. Yeah. So I've got one of those with me as well, so you can have a little smell of that after. Um, it's got lavender in, and some people don't always like lavender, but it's not very strong, so it's worth giving it a go. And it's been proven to, after a week, you get a better night's sleep. You just spray a couple of sprays, literally two or three sprays on your pillow, before you go to bed, leave it about 10 minutes, and then pop your head down and get a good night's sleep, even in this heat. Oh, we could all do with that, could I we? could do with that. We could. I now, if anybody wants to uh, purchase any of these products or find out more, just kind of pick your brain. Yeah. We might have had some questions in. We'll check with Vicky in a bit. Um, what do they do to get in touch with you? So I've got an Instagram page, which I think will be shared later on. Um, you can get in touch with me on there. Um, and then I've also got the website, which is tropicskincare.com forward slash Emma Corrodis. That's mine, and we can get that out to everybody. But feel free to drop me a message, you know, if you've got any questions, you want to know more about any of the products, because there's that many products here. I could talk to you all night about them, but there's too many to go through. So if anyone's got any particular questions, or even like if you've got skincare questions, you know, you may suffer from rosacea, or you may suffer from dry patches on your skin like I did, you can get in touch with me. I'm going to help out and advise on which products are best because there's certain ones that work better for certain skin types. So I can do one-to-one -one consultations with that over the phone or via Zoom. We can oh, it's like a nice little personal advice yeah. there. And I tell you what, yes. we're, we're, we've got to say goodbye to her now. But yes. I'll be over there in a minute. Her lashes, <laughs> her lashes yeah. are real, right? Can I just say that, ladies and gentlemen, watching? I I grabbed it before and I was like, oh, I love it. And they do a mascara that's got these kind of particles that add length and volume to it. And I was like. Oh, that's a bit cheeky. That's great. That I'm going to definitely be looking at your Facebook page I anyway. I don't want to get rid of that smell. But anyway, thank you, Emma Corona, for your time today. Absolutely well, gorgeous okay. products. Then Tropic Skincare there, everybody. Uh, staying with wonderful brands from around our beautiful region, everybody. We're bringing now this lovely lady. Uh, all to talk about... Uh, I'm sweating. I do apologise. I can't even sit. This eye, by the way, you can't see it, but this eye is actually winking unintentionally now, everybody. I'm glad it's just winking. <laughs> Disgusting. Anyway, this is Sarah Flynn, everybody, from Frank and Fox Clothing. Did I say it right? Please tell me I did. Yes, Frank and Fox. Sarah, hello. Welcome Hi. to the programme. Hi. I have been ever so nervous about pronouncing your brand. I really have. It's, it's scared me. If you say what? it too, you can go very wrong with that, can't you, Sarah? Oh, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, I don't know. Why? How can you say it wrong? Uh, yes, that's for another you know, day. Just, say uh, it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's had too much heat. Tell us about your company and how you got started with Frank and Fox because you've been going about a year, is it a year now? It's been my one year anniversary on the fourth of fourth um, of August. Wow! And what got you into it then? Uh, basically, I started it as a hobby. It was something I was doing to um, to help me get through a postnatal depression that I had with um, baby Frank. I needed something to distract my mind so and I'm a very crafty person naturally so I wanted to learn a new skill so I picked up a sewing machine and then that's it it just took off what did you did you know that you had that talent before was it something that you were creative with as a, as a child growing up no but this it's a trait that I have that annoys quite a few of my friends and family that I can I can pick things up very fast I only need to watch a few videos or read a few paragraphs of something and I can pick skills up very quickly. So all it took was, um, I think I made a blanket on my first attempt and then I made um, some curtains and then um, I got adventurous and bought um, some baby clothes patterns and then that's that led me to where I am now. 
Oh well, it's amazing. Let's have a look yeah. at some of your products. First of all, let's have a look at the headband, everybody, because these <laughs> are super useful with this heat at the moment, aren't they? And they're selling like hotcakes. So he the headbands are, are your best sellers at the moment, aren't they? They really are. So I happened upon the headbands by accident. So the headbands started when um, I decided to put my business on hold and so um, exclusively to make headbands for NHS workers to yeah. keep um the hair off the faces when the when they when they were in work um and then through making those i had a few people asking if i made them um for personal use mm -hmm. and then the, and then i created the pattern for the headbands that you you've just shown and do you know what it's it's not just the the, the creativity in, in the items that you make but i think the way that you send it out and the packaging and everything you really are great with the detail that you go to it means a lot to me matt you wouldn't believe how excited i got when i found the perfect tissue paper <laughs> because every if i'm if i'm going to do something i commit to it so everything that comes out of my business is eco-friendly it's like all my packaging is made from recycled materials um even down to the stickers there i've sourced a company called green lemming who make biodegradable stickers so it can all go in the recycling um yeah i love it I, the amount of you times sorry no go on the amount of times people keep telling me that i need to buy a stamp for my rainbows because i'm going through that many orders at the minute um that it, I, I timed myself the other day actually it takes me just shy of six minutes to completely package just one headband but I, I love it and I, I'm a small business and in that sense I always want to stay small I always want to be able to draw my own rainbows and write my own handwritten thank you notes because each order means everything an order for one five pound headband means the same to me as an order for a 30 pound romper so i just want my customers but we're seeing it here and, and and some of these rompers are made out of recycled clothes aren't they majority of the, the man so this one that i've got here wow that's see. gorgeous oh my god so much love has gone into that sarah this one was a special one. I made this one for baby Frank's first birthday. And he's our he's um he's our rainbow baby that we had after losing one. So I had to put a rainbow in there somewhere. And all this is, I don't know if you can see, hand embroidered. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely and what's that been made out of? What was that prior? This one was yeah. an old man was a, a men's shirt, a men's like cotton shirt. That's amazing. We must just talk about the curly girl method and you brought out these towels very, very quickly though. Curly girl method is life changing for anybody who has um, anything from kinks to waves to curls. It's basically a method that you follow that um, encourages your natural curls to come out. Um, so you have to take all um, parabens, sulfate, silicones, all things like that out of out of the products that you use and it enhances your curls basically fantastic so is it a towel then that we're talking about so i made i got in contact with someone called um well she curly girl who's on instagram i've seen her she's amazing yes. so she's one of the reasons why my headbands took off so well because she supported me and shared me and everything like that but i created the towel for her um because i i got into the curly girl method and started watching the videos and what you need to do and one of the main things was to stop using terry towel in towels because they absorb all the moisture out of your hair and she was using just a massive t-shirt on her head as a towel so i said to her well I, i've got loads of t-shirts i've got all, all loads of recycled t-shirts i can make you a towel out of the t-shirts and then that took off that's amazing. Where can people find these beautiful products? Etsy. I'm on Etsy at the moment, um, which is um, it's an amazing website that's uh, created for all handmade and craft items. That's amazing. Oh, well, listen, brilliant. thank you so much for your time today. Thanks There's for having me. 
beautiful products yeah. and uh, come back and tell us more about them in the next few months. Oh, yeah, I can talk to you forever. You, you've got some incredible stuff and so much of it is really nice and bespoke. So if you do want something a bit different, you need to go uh, to Frank and Fox. Absolutely. Amazing thank you what you're doing. Much, <laughs> thank you very much. Right then, very, very quickly. Uh, over to Victoria with um, wrapping up the comments. What are people been saying? So we've got a few about Tropic Skincare. So Lizzie said Tropic Skincare is beautiful. The only cleanser that gets off waterproof mascara. Yeah, she's right. yeah. Jess mentioned it's also vegan and that's perfect for her. So another plus point. Fantastic. Um, we've got to say hi to Paul Rudd, our resident weatherman. Hey, he's, hey, uh, Paul. he's come and said hello. And then a few people are really positive about the um, Eat Out to Help Out scheme. It means a restaurants are busier, people are staying in work, it gives people jobs. But then there is the downside of are they quieter at the weekends? That's mm. another point. Yeah, so, um, there, isn't there? Yeah. Lots of really things is. to talk about. It's a massive discussion. Have you enjoyed your first show, Vicky? Have you enjoyed it? It's been good. I mean, it's a bit warm. <laughs> I'll wait to get out of it to be honest with you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Victoria, oh, for this week. Yeah, and don't forget as well, those social channels keep going despite the fact we are only on once a week. Damn, we should be on more. Um, but no, if you want to join in the conversation and send us some comments throughout the week, you know where to find us at your MCR, and that is on Facebook, Twitter, and the old Instagram. Very quickly, what have we got next week? Gosh, next week we have got some special guests from an event that I've been doing that is very, very exciting. It's for a fantastic charity called Prevent Breast Cancer, mm -hmm. and we've got some guests coming in about that. So, uh, yeah. We've also got a guest coming in talking about smashing rings up. Yes, it's a bespoke ring maker from Manchester, everybody, and uh, they're trying to stop it. You can't say things like that. And they're going to be coming in uh, to tell us all about their beautiful ring. Fantastic. Rings. Fantastic. I've go. got a story about a ring that I can tell you as well. I've got a few. Anyway, we'll leave that for next week. In the meantime, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody for joining. Thanks for everybody for spending a little bit of time with me and Shell. Thanks very much for watching the one and only. Your Manchester. Manchester.